Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be going over the basics of Valve Hammer Editor for Counter-Strike Source. I decided to pick it back up again and make some uh, maps for Zombie Mod, which is um, an older mod, but uh, fun nonetheless. Creativity in that particular mod is uh, very open. And um, let's uh, get on with some basics of Hammer. Um, today I'm going to be going over uh, where to find Hammer. Um, specifically for Counter-Strike Source and how to configure it and use it and uh, what some of the configuration settings actually do. So let's get started. Um, in order to find the correct hammer editor, as I'm finding out now that there are several, um, this was not the case before. You used to just go into you know, Steam and Tools and you know, download SDK and then you know, choose the right uh, editor, but uh, not anymore. Um, that doesn't work. So uh, what I had to do was figure out where to go and um, I created a shortcut already but you'll see here um, that you'll simply just go to program files 86 steam or wherever your steam file uh, folder is located um, go to steam apps common counter strike source bin is the path that you're looking for once you're in there you can find the uh, hammer editor it should be an application and then you'll just right click on that and go send to desktop which I've already done I'm not going to do again but then that'll give you a shortcut to your desktop to where you can actually use Hammer. So I've already configured my Hammer, but I'm going to go over some of the settings so that you can mimic them. Um, you'll need to go File, New. And um, right now I'm in a different view. Um, it's Shift-Z, typically. Um, Yeah, auto size four views. So if you go to view, it's also control A, but it'll auto size the four views. So you have the uh, top, front, and side. Um, and then this is your 3D editor. So if you click on camera up here, then you can go to 3D shaded textured polygons. This is going to be a more accurate representation of what you'll actually see in the game. So you typically want to do that. And then up in tools, oops tools, options, um, you'll see now this first page here, you just want to leave this alone. This is purely informational. This will tell you where your maps are going to get saved. Um, seems to be map SRC under C strike source SDK content. We'll go over that later. You can always click on the browse button. That'll take you directly to the directory. Um, while you're editing um, in Steam, it creates something called a VMF file. That is the um, editing file. And um, those are typically saved um, all in the same area here, but we'll, uh, we'll go over that in another tutorial. So here you basically, you want to keep this pretty much the way that it is right here. Um, hammer autosave, this is really important. This will save you. Time between saves, um, I like to put this to five minutes. Um, number of map iterations to save, so once it gets to five saves, um, it will start deleting um, the previous sixth one. Um, amount of hard drive space, you, you, you know, this program came out when hard drive space was at a premium. You can add another zero to this and be perfectly safe. Um, that's a, a gig. Um, if you're using a gig for maps, um, something's probably wrong. <coughs> Undo levels. This is uh, control Z, which is like an undo function. So say you make it a mistake and you know you don't want to fix it manually, you would just hit hold down control and hit Z and that'll undo. Now undo, undo levels will allow you to undo the last 50 things that you did. Um, so I don't know how interesting that'll be. Max cameras, um, this can get really confusing. 100 cameras is kind of ridiculous. I'll show you about cameras um, later on. I would just do one. There's really no reason to have more than one camera. That just gets confusing. Um, these, I would just leave these. I'm not even going to explain these. Just check them and, uh, and shut up. And then right here, default to 15 degree rotations. This is very helpful. Um, all of these things, I would check all of these um, just because. And then the intensity, this is the intensity of the grid lines. If you have it up too high, you're not going to be able to see what you're drawing on here. So I like to bring this down really low. Um, 
highlight every 64 units, again, it just makes your grid really messy. Um, highlight every eight grid lines, it again makes, your, makes everything really messy. Hide grid smaller than four pixels. Um, I don't know that that's needed. Um, you really shouldn't be making anything smaller than eight uh, grid lines. Um, you know, that's, this is all pretty good. 3D views, uh, back clipping plane is just how far you can see in the 3D window here. Model render distance, you want to leave this right around here. This really ultimately depends on how powerful your computer is. I'm running a beast, so, you know, I have these jacked up um, a little higher than, than normal. Um, you can also have it animate models if you want. I don't really care. Um, model render distance, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, this is how far you're going to be able to see details of the model as opposed to a block. Detail render distance, again, how far away you can see details of stupid things. It's dumb. Navigation, use mouse look, of course. Do not reverse the mouse access, otherwise you're going to be like, what's going on? Forward speed, this is, again, all in the 3D screen and time to speed. Uh, I would leave that alone or reduce it a little bit. Forward speed, I like to go pretty quick. I have no idea what the hell this is. Field of view is obvious, 90 is typical. Um, I would just leave all that alone. Materials, don't mess with that. That's from an older, that's from like Half-Life 1 and whatever the heck else. Build programs, don't worry about this. Just leave this alone. Um, this is like, you know, Viz, Rad, BSP. This is this different um, commands that are used to actually compile your map and such. Just leave that alone. Hit OK. And now you're styling. You're, you should look something like this. Now you want to find the absolute centers right here. Absolute centers here and here. Um, you always want to build from here out, typically. I mean, you can do whatever you like. They give you a lot of space, as you can see, to build. I mean, you know, if you used every single inch of this space to build, it would probably take you a few hours to go from one end to the other. So, um, yeah, nobody really wants to do that. So, anyways, um, you have this here. This is the selection tool. This is how you select things. Um, this is never really used. This is kind of left over from a while ago. I never use it. It's stupid. Magnify tool. I have no idea why you would need that. Camera tool, we're going to go over that in detail. Entity tool, that is probably going to be something that we go over later on. Really what we're going to focus on today is the block tool. Um, this is how you create solids and the actual environment of your map. And then the texture application tool. Um, this is a wonderful tool that allows you to manipulate the textures um, within your, your 3D environment. Um, the rest of these, this is apply current texture. Yeah, you can use that. Um, this is probably your better bet. Um, decals, yeah, we'll go over that later. Overlays, later. Clipping tool and vertex manipulation. Um, vertex tool. These things are advanced and I will have a full tutorial on displacements later, but not today. So let's start off our little uh, map here. I want to show you a couple of things. Um, first thing is to click on the block tool. Once you click on the block tool, it allows you to make blocks. Over here you have the texture. Uh, what's going on? Can you uh, listen to me? All right, whatever. Anyways, this stupid thing. Um, click on browse and here you have all of your textures. It's overwhelming. There's a lot. You can make your own textures and add them in here. Um, a lot of these textures are for models and they just don't render in the world. Um, a lot of these are tools that, you know, you use like ladder. That's how you make a ladder, you know, uh, fogs, triggers, no draw is probably the most important one. Um, you know, and then there's other ones that player clip. This is like an invisible wall that you can't go through. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things to, to look at in here. Um, skybox, 2D Skybox, these will be going over probably at a different um, tutorial. It's in depth. But anyways, you know, for, for now I'm going to choose um, no draw. And there's a filter down here. Um, I suggest using it and just type in NOD. You just type in the first three letters of what you're looking for. And it's tools, no draw. This is what you always want to start with because you want no draw on anything that is not being seen by the player in the game. Otherwise, the engine renders it, and on crappy computers, which for some reason everybody seems to have, 
because I've made a lot of maps, and they always complain, oh, my FPS is bad, and then you have somebody else, well, my FPS is perfect, and I'm like, well, crappy computer, but, you know, a nice computer. And I have an amazing computer, so I don't really have anything to test this on. So anyways, what we're going to do is um, we're going to create our first solid, and it's going to be in the no-draw texture, and you'll see here, I'm just kind of drawing, this is the top-down view, Okay, and then this is, you know, these are basically both sides. They call it side and front, but they're really just one side and another side, um, depending on your perspective. Once you draw this, right click and create object. Okay, so then here we want to be able to see shaded textured polygons. Click on the camera tool, and then this is just WASD um, to move around as I am here. You know, this is A, this is D. This is W, this is S. Same thing you would in any FPS game, okay? So there's a couple of different things here. Um, if you hold down Shift and hit Z, it allows you to maximize the window that you've clicked on recently. Um, of course, uh, Shift and Z doesn't do nothing to get it back, so you gotta go back up here. I guess Control A would be the other way to do it. This will always take you back to this view. So if you clicked here and then went Shift Z, you would have that, which in my opinion is completely useless. Um, the, really the only one is this one and then for some reason shift Z doesn't get you out of it I don't know why and we're back here again so camera view is exclusively for this window okay one thing that you can do is hold down shift and drag in any of the 2d views and then you can actually manipulate your camera in here which I think is kind of dumb considering you can just do this so now what we have here is a big no draw block okay well we don't want people walking on this because it doesn't look like anything in the game it's invisible so we want to add a texture so let's use the texture application tool and let's find something different let's say uh, ground my spelling ground okay so <laughs> there's lots of grounds um, you could also do floor if you wanted to do an in inside one, so floor, okay, um, this, this will probably be a little better for, for what we're doing here today. Um, just choose something that you like. You'll have to play around with textures a lot um, to get used to them and what they do. Let's take this one here, and then we're just going to right click on there. That's it. That's all we're doing is right clicking. If you want to select the face, you left click. It's already selected. From here, you can center it. If you have multiple, you can hold down uh, shift and select multiple faces and you can treat them as one and it'll, it'll stretch and fit the image across them all as if, you know, it, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, fit is another one. Justify, really in, under justify, you're going to use fit and center the most. Don't use fit on large faces and I'll show you why. Watch. Here, let's get a little closer. I'm actually rolling the mouse wheel to move myself forward. If you click fit, this is what's going to happen. Okay, now you can't really tell, but that's huge. That's not something that you want. So what I would do is I'm going to do control Z. This is where the undo levels come in. And see, it goes back to where it was. So you can you can change the texture scale yourself and and make the textures bigger or smaller as you need okay um, light map scale we'll go over that in another one texture shift this actually does not resize the texture but it'll move it around on the x and y plane which is pretty cool so that being said let's get out of that and see now we have a floor to walk on but what the player is not seeing is all in no draw this is important for rendering and CPU and memory utilization and keeping it low. The other thing I want to do here is this. In this view, which we're going to almost exclusively be, you know, uh, editing in, um, this is really important. You can pretty much make everything right in here um, after you get good enough. But what I would do is do this, and I believe it's you hit X. Yeah, X gives you the these little things here so that you can manipulate sizes and it gives you a grid so right now in the bottom right hand corner you can see here snap on grid is 64 there's a couple of different ways to change that and this is really important you're going to be doing it a lot um it is uh, okay right here 
And it tells you, this is the shortcut right here, th these little brackets, which are next uh, to the right of the P key on most keyboards. Okay, and this is how you can make that. So we want it smaller. 64 is roughly the size of a, of a person. So it's a little more than 64. I believe they upped it to 90 or something. But, you know, you don't want huge uh, blocks. The smaller the blocks, the better. So we're going to go with a smaller grid. And I'm actually going to use this here. And you can see it's down. I'm going to go to 8. 8 is really good for making walls and such. And you can see here, I'm just resizing this. That's too small. That's 8 right there. Okay. And there's, you know, there's a few different ways. Now you can hit um, Z. If you just hit Z, it allows, it's, it kind of locks the mouse to the cursor. And then you can just edit right in here. And it makes it so much easier. Okay. So now we've made the floor. It's about eight, um, eight units um, wide, which is perfect. Okay. We have a texture that, you know, people can see in the game. Um, I'm going to hit Z again. And I'm just going to click off of it so you can see what it is. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create walls and a roof. Okay. This is just going to be a closed off single room. Um, nothing really important. Okay. So one of the ways to do that, um, which is really cool, is um, taking one solid and basically copying and pasting it. Um, and there's a really easy way to do that. So you go to the selection tool. You click on this, hold down shift, I believe. Um, no, I'm sorry. Hold down shift and then hit the up arrow. Is that right? No. What was it again? It was, um, well, I've only really ever done it in here. I'll have to remember how to do it in there. But if you come in here and you just take this, hold down shift and drag it up, it'll make an exact duplicate of it. And then from there, you can, you know, resize it. Um, as you need. So this will be, you know, right about there. So now you have a, a wall. We'll make it like, uh, you know, three, about three or four units high. Um, and then from here, it kind of makes it really easy. Um, you can just drag this over. Now there was a way for, to do this in here and I don't remember what it was. Um, I could have swore it was, um, Yeah, so that does actually work, um, but it just becomes really cumbersome in um, trying to move it around. And I thought you could use the up and down arrows, but apparently you can't. So we'll just drag this over here. What a pain. Sometimes it's easier to just grab the bounding box, move it over, and then just, you know, make it eight. All right, eight. And it looks like it, I may have done something here that is kind of making it hard to see. Let's go back to that. Um, yeah, there we go. Now we can actually see what we're doing. Okay, so again, we're going to take this and holding down shift and just kind of drag it and drop it. Makes another wall. Okay. And um, we'll go like this. Now here's, I just realized I did something. You'll have to forgive me. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, I'm kind of going by old memory here, but, um, I seem to have, um, moved the texture of the ground and it's going to, um, show up on some faces. See like here. Okay. Because I did that. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, it is really important to keep no draw on anything that's not going to be seen. I'm going to show you how to fix that quickly. It's pretty simple. Um, just kind of making this. I am simply using shift and left click. Uh, I'm sorry, shift and uh, control and the left mouse button um, to drag these around. So now we have a basic room, a rather large room, but um, you know, it, it'll suffice for today's tutorial. So I'm just going to select this like that. Boom, selected everything. There's an easier way to do it, actually. You can um, go like this, select that. And that'll change the texture. I believe you can just close this, and then it shows up down here. And then you can select everything, and then that's where this button here comes in, Apply Current Texture. 
So now we have everything as no draw. And then we can go back to here, browse, and we can grab the floor texture. And um, we can, um, we should be able to. But for some weird reason, it's not allowing me to do it to the ground, OK? Uh, Z, 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 Z. Oh, where are they? All kinds of issues here. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Why can't I do this? What's happening? I can select you, but let's try. What's going on here? All right, so hammer kind of blows. Um, no, that's fine. What are we doing here? What's what's happening? What is going on? You cannot texture that solid. Why? It won't allow it. Interesting. Okay. So the first thing to do is not panic. Um, it's typically something stupid. So there's a couple of things that we could do. Um, one, we can, you know, select this and uh, try this. But that's not working either. So I'm just going to delete this texture. Oh, you know what? I think I found out what it was. There was two of them on top of each other, which still should not have made a difference, but for some insane reason it did. There we go. Okay. There's always the most logical, simple, stupid answer is usually the most logical, obvious, stupid answer. So anyways, um, we're going to do walls. Oh, shit. Don't hit, um, you know, enter. Just type in walls or wall, rather. You got wall, you know, a bunch of them. And um, we'll take this and we'll just make, you know, wall. I'm hitting Z to, m um, sorry, Z to move around. And you can kind of edit like this. And then this is where the file edit sheet comes in. Um, you can select this because this needs to be on mode lift and select. So when you select it, it'll, and then right click on these, it'll align all the textures. Texture alignment is a really simple thing to do. Um, misaligned or non-aligned or just you know maligned or however the heck you want to say it are it's annoying to see that in a map you know just take a couple of minutes and make your textures nice and smooth and correct and then that way you don't have to deal with you know a bunch of stupidity and people making fun of you and all of that stuff because believe me people are brutal on mappers but if you stick with it and don't listen to them you're always going to find that there's a few people that uh, love your maps and uh, it's worth it to do it just for them, in my opinion, anyway. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to come up here. I don't want that like that, because that's the roof. And then um, I'm just going to type in sky. And you can just choose a sky. We're gonna, I'm going to make another tutorial about sky maps here and how to use them. Um, typically, you just want sky box. And then I'll show you how to, you know, I'll show you how to change the skybox. It's really simple. You just go to map, map properties, and here's your skybox texture name right here. And you put, you just change the name. And you know, like I said, you just come in here, find a sky that you like. You're gonna have to dork around with this a little bit to find out, you know, the actual name of the sky. In fact, if you go on the Googles and you type in skybox names for Valve Hammer Editor. It'll give you all the names, and then you can use them in your map. So it's kind of cool. Um, it kind of gives it a 3D map. Um, now, 3D skyboxes with things in the background and such, that's a whole other tutorial. We'll be going over that at a later date. Um, I just wanted to cover the basics, setting up hammer and everything. That's going to bring our tutorial to the end. I am Master Choda, and I'm very happy to have uh, brought you this information, and I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be answering them down in the comments below. Thank you very much. Have a great day day.